You are watching TFI. Greetings, salutations, welcome to TFI, where we are into video number two of our interviews of Inventor Class Speakers for Autodesk University 2019, with this video being all about Inventor uh, and the Forge platform. And on the line with me, I have Andrew Akinson from Autodesk. So yes, in the lead up to Autodesk University 2019, we're doing a series of uh, interviews with the class speakers who are gonna be presenting at Autodesk University this year. It's all part of the uh, the 20 year anniversary for Autodesk Inventor with Autodesk putting on a special class track this year with uh, targeted topics that are of a particular interest to Autodesk and their customer base. And uh, we're going to be interviewing some of the speakers to talk a bit about the classes, a bit about the speakers, and to just let you know that their classes exist. So if you're turning up to Autodesk University this year, you can possibly register if there's still some spaces left on the class. Alternatively, after the fact, you can check the Autodesk University website to see if the, the class has been recorded, and then you can watch it at your leisure after the fact. So today we are talking with Andrew Akinson and his class is SD3238084 is the official code for the class. It is getting started with design automation for Inventor on Forge. And Andrew's class is Tuesday, which is, which is a good day. That is a good class day. It's better than having a class. My class was on a Thursday yeah. last year. That was a hellish, hellish graveyard. Yeah. Shit. yeah. Tuesday, November 19th, 2.45 p.m. to 3.45 PM. With this uh, getting started with design automation for Inventor on Forge, if anyone has an interest in the Forge platform, if you're not sure about what this is, this could be the perfect class for you. So let's get talking with Andy. Andy, I've been digging up your LinkedIn as well. So you've been with yeah. Autodesk for I think 12 years? I think. 12 years, just just 12 years this month. Yeah. So what is it that you do within, within Autodesk at the moment? So I am a software architect on the Inventor team. Um, some people think I work for the Inventor team. Some people think I work on the Forge team because I am bridging the two together. So, um, you know, as an architect, I'm always looking at how we can map our technology to our business needs. So I'm, I'm that bridge that helps our team make sure we're designing the right things for the future and make sure that we can actually make money at the same time while we're doing it. So. So what, what were you doing before you moved over onto the Forge, uh, the Forge platform? So I've been on the Inventor team the whole 12 years. I've been here at Autodesk. Um, I was initially involved with the Ribbon Project. I've been, my whole career, I've spent gluing technologies together. I'm super passionate, really about two things. You know, one is automation, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. And the other is I really love uh, bringing technologies together to, to really help solve customer problems as well as uh, using um, the right thing for the right job. So started out with the Ribbon Project Inventor. I've been uh, worked my way through was a, a Inventor Tech lead for a while, um, and then uh, we had an opportunity to start up um, some cloud initiatives and see where Inventor fit in, and really jumped in there as an architect to help lead our cloud initiatives with Inventor. All right, thanks, Andy. So okay. um, you say you worked on the Inventor team for roughly twelve years. Obviously, my yep. channel, the channel that this, this video is going up on, is heavily focused on Inventor. So I think a lot of people are yep. quite interested in knowing who's behind the technology that they're working on day to day. So is there anything else, any particular yeah. interest and in fascinating things within the Inventor product that you've worked on that you're particularly proud of over the twelve years? Yeah. So to be honest, the things I've done with the user interface uh, as we re. Uh, I've worked on uh, things like the materials project, so bringing in materials across the company into Inventor, whether that's physical or appearance, uh, really helped integrate that in, as well as some of the things we did around enhanced visualization. So, and then I've also been involved with some of the other efforts that that bring Inventor technology into other areas. So. I've been involved with things we did around the publisher. We've tried some things with a mock-up service, with Force Effect. So some of the things that involve Inventor technology in other products, I, I've been very involved with that as well. Right, um, so I really, yeah. So, so you're yep. involved with Inventor Publisher? Um, for for a season. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And most of that was uh, really getting publisher in the cloud, right? We, you know, we tried an experiment there. Um, got a bunch of feedback from our customers, and then you know brought some of that back into a presentation environment. Yeah, and then sadly, publisher was then discontinued to. And then sadly, it was people's think, dismay. Yeah, we still haven't quite uh, got over that. Sadly, yet. I used to have color in my hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so we'll move on to your class, uh, Andy. So, getting yeah. started with design automation for Inventor on Forge. So, 
Me being one of them, I've never really been all that involved with the Forge platform. It's not an area that I've had exposure with. So I would imagine a lot of people out there have been quite the same. You can see a lot of marketing references at the moment with yeah. regards to Forge. You see it all over the place, but not really all that sure what it does. So is any chance you can give us just a quick, like in a nutshell description of what the Forge platform is? Sure. So the, the Forge platform is really a cloud-based platform for customers and partners to extend Autodesk capabilities in the cloud. So if you look at Forge today, we have services and, and it's it's API driven. So there's, there's documentation out there today, but we have services for data management because you can't do much without having your data there. Uh, we have the design automation, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, this is basically a headless version of AutoCAD today and eventually Inventor, Revit, and Max as well. Uh, we have APIs to connect into BIM 360. So BIM 360 being a cloud service, uh, we allow you to extend that via our Forge platform. Uh, we have a reality capture API and we have a, an eventing API to kind of glue everything together. And the idea of Forge is we let you do things like compute, design, share and collaborate at scale in the cloud. Okay, so is this mostly mostly using cloud power to take away resource that you would have otherwise had on premise? Is this um... uh, design automation specifically is? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, we definitely have workflows where if you were doing things either locally in Inventor or if you had, you know, number versions of Inventor working like a server locally to automate your process, we do that in the cloud for you. So you no longer need to manage infrastructure, but more importantly, we just charge you for what you use and we do that at scale. So if you have operations that don't need human interaction, you don't want to set up an IT infrastructure for, and you want to be able to do that at scale in the cloud, that's where we really, I, I think we really excel with design automation, as well as in providing connectivity to other systems. So if you need to connect with a CRM for your customer data or an ERP, you know, there's there's an API there to do that, right? You can You can glue these things together programmatically. All right, thanks. So, is the is, is there any previous customer uh, any, any customer engagements with Forge platform that you, that have stood out for you that you're able to just define and again in a nutshell just to let people know what is possible with the Forge platform? Sure. So, we've been engaging both with some of our customers directly as well as some of our development partners to build out solutions uh, specifically on design automation for Inventor. And we're dealing with one large customer right now who um, it's a it's a part generation that they have. So they'll get a custom order in and they'll need to generate tens of thousands of parts for this custom order. Um, so instead of using an on-prem, you know, part generation pipeline, they've been able to move that over to Forge. And we've seen, you know, over the course of our beta, um, we have seen hundreds of thousands of jobs come in from them as we test this out, as we test out both scale as well as throughput of the system. And we've worked with some other customers doing some some fairly large scale uh, con online configurators. Um, so they've been able to take some some fairly large data sets in, um, you know, do things like driving configuration or maybe layout um, from external sources and then drive through a series of Inventor iLogic or the API, um, be able to drive whether that's updated 3D models uh, to come back so the customer can see what it looks like or uh, 2D downstream manufacturing documentation. So we've been definitely engaging with customers directly and then we've been also working with some partners and we did some, we did a AU demo last year uh, with D3 um, around a vessel configurator that they've been working on and the ruler engine. But we're also you know, engaging with a lot of other partners who, who really look forward to the capabilities of Inventor now in the cloud, not just locked into the desktop. It does sound quite interesting. So my brain's just sort of going away and whirring away because this sounds yeah. like something I could actually use within my day job as well. So I'm, I'm sort yeah. of yeah. Like, curiously, especially the ERP integration. So that, that sounds that sounds pretty yeah, interesting. Yeah, we, we should probably follow up on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So we'll um, get specifically into the, the class itself. Uh, obviously, without yeah. going into specific details about what it is you're going to be uh, covering, the source material. Uh, yeah. Can you give us just like a brief overview of what the the outline of your class is going to be? What what can someone get out of that class and will walk away with at the end? Certainly. So I'll I'll go over the outline, but I also wanted to talk about kind of who my class is targeted towards, sure. right? Because because it at the core it really is a software development class. So I will get into the weeds a little bit, but I'm also going to cover things at a what is it all about? What's the workflow? 
I'll show a little bit of a demo. So, you know, it's definitely one of those things where every now and then we'll, we'll dive into a few code examples, but I'm also going to cover it from, from really what it means from a customer perspective. So if I look at the outline, you know, I'll definitely start with just a high level overview of what Forge is. You know, definitely have, have a few slides on that. Where design automation fits in, you know, a little bit of the history of design automation, a few of the workflows that we've seen, uh, you know, I've talked about, about here a little bit with you, but we'll go over those in a little more detail and, you know, with some nice screenshots and, and some examples. And then then the, the core of this is really, we're going to go through what you can do in Inventor Desktop today from an automation standpoint with iLogic, and I'll have a sample we'll do there. I'll show you then how to take that, bring that into Forge, and then from there, um, we'll be able to see in Forge, you can now run a configuration workflow or drive an iLogic parameter, see the output, get that back. So it, it really is going to demonstrate how you can plug this in to an automation pipeline. And then at the very end, I'll give an example of that same thing that you had on the desktop. You had some, some iLogic rules. We'll all show that in a, a simple online configurator that I've written. And then all of this is going to have reference code. So I'll, I'll cover it from a, a workflow and, and demo standpoint, but at the end of the day, you know, my class handout for this, and, and I've done this in others and it's worked pretty well. It's going to be a link to my GitHub repo where you can go and get the code. Oh, right? So you can see it running and you can also use it as reference for, for getting a jump start. That sounds awesome. So the class is mostly yeah. aimed at people who plan on going away and, and doing this for themselves rather than people who need to understand what it's capable of. It's, it's more for the hands-on it, people. It's, it's both. It's both. So the, what it is, is the hands-on people can go and take the code later and jump in, as well as, you know, the first half is definitely going to be, what's it about? Why would you use design automation? You know, how can you jump in and do it? And we do have our, our product management team is doing a why you'd automate. So there is another class for that. That I think is a good complement to this, where you know this is definitely one of those nodes in your automation workflow. So if you want to think about it more from a business perspective, that would be a good complement class for this. Yeah, I, I've done enough of these. I'm super fine with show up for the overview part. If we get into the weeds, feel free to leave. But if you really want to get that overview, yeah, you know, or if you're watching this online later, you know, wa watch the first half of my class. You should get a really good overview for why design automation means something to me as a customer. So you mentioned that you've, you've got a class handout to uh, to give out to the class. Is that going to be available yep. to anyone who watches the class after the fact? Yeah, I'll provide a link, um, you know, definitely in my slide deck as well as in the class. I'll mention that. So it'll be up in public GitHub. So you should also be able to search for it. Awesome. Uh, so yep. for the I guess for the benefit of anyone else uh, who's going to be at AU and kicking about, I think you've got a, a few yep. other things going on there as well. So have you got any other sessions that might be of interest to people? I'm definitely involved with a number of other classes and sessions we have uh, at AU this year that I'm, I'm super excited about. So the one I mentioned before, I'll be a co-speaker on automation and, and how Inventor really comes into play for automation a, as a strategy in a company. So I'll be working with our product management team on that. Um, I also have a class at DevCon this year. Uh, so that's Monday of AU, and that's really going to be focused on five cool things you can do with design automation. So one of them, I'll be going over the, the configurator example that I'll show in the, the class we were just talking about, but the others are assembly generation. So we'll be able to bring assemblies together based off of rules um, and, and generate an assembly and then take that assembly and generate the downstream uh, 2D drawings from that assembly. And then I'm um, going to also show how we can integrate um, going from Inventor to Revit um, today. So we do have workflows where you want to run the content from Inventor and then bring that over to Revit, uh, usually through some kind of simplification process. So we'll, we'll just show some simple demos as well as some reference code for that as well. So it's a way to really both jumpstart people getting thinking as well as providing some references uh, for some of the, the primary workflows that we've seen and we've gotten some feedback on during our beta. Time and then on Thursday, I believe at 2:45, I am hosting a meetup for anyone interested in design automation for Inventor. I will have some customers there who have been active beta customers, and it's really a time uh, certainly to reach out to me and, and the team who'll be there from the design automation team. But I really want to connect customers and hear the discussions around what you want to automate uh, with Inventor in the cloud. It, it sounds like you're super excited about all this stuff, Annie. Do you, do you ever engage directly yeah. with customers or do you tend to just work behind the scenes? Oh, no, it's, it's one of my favorite things. So um, my training, I am a, I'm a computer scientist at heart, right? Um, I 
went through an engineering program. So I have a little bit of engineering experience, but I am not a mechanical designer, but I love seeing what mechanical designers can do with Inventor. The great thing about Forge and design automation is it allows me to talk to our customers who are automating. So I have gone to customer sites, I've done trainings um, as we run into, you know, further opportunity for design automation at some of our customers or partners, I'm directly talking to them to see what we can do. So I'm engaging with both our product management team as well as our sales team and direct customers to see where the fit is, right? And, and to figure out, you know, are there things that customers can just do today on design automation as it is, and then help us design the future of design automation for the next phase. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm super, super passionate about this stuff and, uh, and really enjoy connecting with customers directly. That's awesome. And I guess Autodesk University is a perfect place for that. So I, I take it this isn't your first rodeo over at Autodesk University. Have you been to a fair few of them in the past? A uh, fair few. Yeah. Both both in Las Vegas as well as uh, London. You know, I spoke at London last year as well. So I, I love talking to our customers around the world about this. I'll also be speaking at our DevCon in Germany this year. Even outside of AU in the classes, um, we do have a bunch of content. We have a webinar we did. Um, as well as our beta is live, the documentation is out there. So if people are interested now, I'd actually strongly encourage you, if, if you are gonna go to AU, attend these classes, go look at the documentation now, go go see what's out there. You know, if, if you have a chance, you know, think about how this, something like a headless inventor in the cloud would map into your company's automation plans. You know, and, and bring those questions because, you know, AU for me really is a chance to engage directly with the customers and, and really figure out, you know, mapping that what we have today with what we need to do in the future. Yeah, yeah. I mean, de design automation is undoubtedly, uh, it's it's not even the future, it's now, it's needed right now. Um, it is. I know from personal experience that you can only do so much with standard product scripts and routines before you start yep. receiving questions and having demands for things that you you can't do but yeah. automation can. Uh, so to have this new platform, yeah. which is basically entirely integrated within the Autodesk ecosystem, it yeah. sounds perfect. And from again, from my point of view, it is a little bit daunting because not being a programmer myself, it, it's like, where do you start with these sort of things? So if, yep. if for someone like myself, who has no idea where to even begin, you see all, all, the, all the guys going to DevCon and you know, they all yeah. have forged T-shirts on. Clearly, they know everything about yeah. it. For, for me, who doesn't? Like, where do I go to understand more about Forge and what it's capable of? Well, there's there's a couple things, right? I mean, at AU, first of all, we are going to have a Forge answer bar in area. So, you know, come in, talk to the Forge team, right? I think that's a really good opportunity. Um, you know, we we have accelerators if you want to dive deep, um, but we also have, you know, we are engaging with customers and resellers today. So go to the forge.autodesk.com site. There's ways to get a hold of us, you know, if you have some questions, as well as, you know, things like my getting started class. While I say we're gonna dive into the weeds a little bit, only for a little bit, right? My, my whole idea is similar to what we've done with iLogic and Inventor, right? We've tried to make automation and things like scripting approachable, right? So my idea here is for somebody like you who you don't, you know, programming, it's not your day job, it's not your background, but you want to automate your processes, right? We want to make sure that we have the right level of why and uh, some common utilities you can use, as well as engaging with, you know, development partners out there who that is their expertise, yeah. right? Because we, at the end of the day, this is a building block, right? It's not an out of the box solution. It's a way to plug in the power of Autodesk into your existing ecosystem. All right, well, thank you very much, uh, Andy. Uh, just as a reminder, Andy's class is on the Tuesday, uh, November 19th at AU Vegas this year, 2.45 to 3.45, uh, getting started with design automation for Inventor on Forge. Thank you very much for your time, Andy, and I will see you indeed right. over at Vegas in November. All right. Thanks, Neil. Cheers.